East Germany was a communist state and had a centrally planned economy. But did you know that East Germany also secretly participated in market economy? Led by this man, Alexander Schalke Golotkowski, also called Mr. Goldfinger East, the country earned billions, and not always in a very honest and transparent way. In this video I will shed some light on the shady practices of a secret government agency. Coming up. Hi and welcome to another East Germany Investigated video. This is the channel that will dive into the interesting history of East Germany, also called the German Democratic Republic. We will share fascinating facts, unravel myths and talk about the former country's biggest secrets. Let's get started. We're in the 1950s. The economy of East Germany is not healthy. The young socialist state has got serious liquidity issues. Why? First of all, the country has to deal with a shrinking population because a lot of young people are fleeing to the West, causing a very tight labor market. Second, East Germany has been blacklisted by a lot of Western countries that simply do not recognize the newly founded German Democratic Republic as a state, which results in large restrictions in foreign trade. On top of that, still a lot of repairs need to be done after the Second World War. East Germany does not participate in the Marshall Plan, like the western part of Europe, but in its Soviet version, the Molotov Plan, which is merely based on trade relations amongst socialist countries. The country does not receive any financial support. In order to find ways to earn extra cash, in 1966 a new division is established, called Commerciale Coordinierung, Commercial Coordination. The division's objective? maximal generation of capitalist currencies outside the state plan. Its leader is Alexander Schalke Golotkowski, who until then was the first secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Trade. The Commercial Coordination Division consisted out of a number of central departments and a long list of subsidiary companies. At the end of 1989, more than 3000 employees worked for Commercial Coordination, or in short, COCO. During its existence of almost 24 years, COCO generated about 27 billion Deutsche Mark. For the biggest part, the COCO companies did legal businesses that also could have just been dealt with by the Ministry of Foreign Trade. But if you look a little bit closer, you'll find that COCO was involved in a lot of practices that you at least could call strange, questionable and even immoral. So what kind of practices are we talking about? The following 10 different kinds of businesses that commercial coordination, or COCO, was involved in are worth mentioning. COCO's biggest subsidiary was called Intrac, which made an estimated contribution of about 12.5 billion Deutsche Mark over the total time it existed. That's from 1967 until 1989. Intrac was into the following main businesses. Credits. Commercial coordination, COCO, had its own funds and this enabled COCO to set up a lending business in the West as of 1971. It was an important milestone for a communist country to get loans on the capitalist market because it played a big role in the recognition of the German Democratic Republic as a sovereign state. But after 10 years, in 1981, the loan activities were discontinued due to a credit crisis that started at the end of that year. The country was in big trouble and not far from bankruptcy. In 1982, the German Democratic Republic was in debt at Western creditors for about 25 billion D-marks, whereas 5.1 billion D-marks had to be paid each year for interest only, leaving only 20 billion to use, not even mentioning the repayments. In June 1983, it was announced that West Germany would grant a credit of 1 billion D-mark to East Germany. Charles Golotkowski had negotiated this loan with Franz Josef Strauss, the minister-president of the West German state Bavaria. The loan was used to stabilize the economy but also to reopen the doors to Western banks to obtain new loans. In 1984, a second large credit of 950 million D-marks had been negotiated with West Germany. In both cases, East Germany had pledged the so-called Transitpauschale, an annual lump sum that West Germany paid to East Germany for the use of the transit roads to West Berlin. This sum amounted to several hundreds of millions per year, so the loans did not represent a big risk for West Germany. Waste from the West 
Because of the limited space in West Berlin, West Berlin had negotiated with the GDR to dump their domestic waste on a landfill site in East Berlin, starting in the 70s. In the 80s, also garbage from West Germany's biggest city Hamburg was dumped in the northwest of the GDR near the city of Schönberg. Later, additional doubtful businesses took place concerning hazardous waste, where West Germany could get rid of the waste very easily, paying only a fraction of what the processing of toxic waste would cost on its own territory. On top of that, starting in the mid-80s, also waste imports took place from the Netherlands, Austria, France, Switzerland and Italy. The garbage business was very profitable to Intrac. In total, a profit of 1.1 billion had been generated. However, the environmental consequences were huge and last until today. The next two businesses of Coco subsidiary Intrac are the so-called church businesses. The communist ideology does not propagate religion, and already in the 1950s, the East German Protestant and Catholic churches asked West Germany for financial help. The German Democratic Republic exploited this situation by setting up three kinds of special businesses. Sondergeschäfte. Special Business A for the Protestant Church and Special Business C for the Catholic Church. In the beginning, so at the end of the 50s, the East and West German churches solved this amongst themselves with money transfers from West to East. But then the East German government took the money and demanded that this kind of financial support has to go via them. Till 1989, special businesses A and C added up to 2.7 billion D-mark, not only in the form of money, but also as copper, coal or coffee delivered to East Germany. Special business type B, and now it gets even more interesting, was for the trade of political prisoners. In the 60s, 70s and 80s, a total of 33,775 persons was released. In total, West Germany spent 3.4 billion D-mark for the release of political prisoners from East Germany, so that's on average 100k per prisoner, mostly paid in the form of raw materials such as copper, silver and crude oil, and arranged by the Protestant Church. So why did this go via the Church? This had to do with the fact that West Germany did not want to officially recognize East Germany as a country and therefore also could not act as an official contractual partner. The West German Protestant Church offered its help for the negotiations and further processing. You can imagine that once these morally questionable practices became known to the public, there was a lot of discussion and criticism. The second largest cocoa subsidiary was called Forum GmbH. It is estimated that this company brought in almost 9 billion D mark over the whole period it existed. That's from 1971 until 1989. The biggest part of the contribution came from the Intershops, a chain of stores where you could only pay with foreign currency, so not with East German marks. The assortment contained luxury products like coffee, cigarettes and electronics. The regular GDR citizen did not have the means to go shopping at the intershops, but only went there to get a smell of the West. Because the customers were mostly foreigners, the stores were located at train stations and hotels. For years, the intershops have been the most profitable division of commercial coordination. Intershops charged VAT over the products that they had purchased in West Germany, where no VAT was applied, which was a considerable contribution to their profit. These were the two biggest cocoa companies, but worth mentioning are also the following two subsidiaries. Imes was Coco's arms trading enterprise, founded in 1982. Till 1989, the end of his existence, Imes made a total profit of 719 million marks. The GDR called itself State of Peace, but on the other hand could not resist to export arms. Maybe the most questionable arms trade took place during the war between Iran and Iraq, which lasted from 1980 till 1988. The GDR supplied automatic weapons and tanks to both countries. Then we've got the Kunst und Antiquitäten GmbH for arts and antiquities. This company made profit by selling arts and antiquities in exchange for foreign currency. What kinds of art? All kinds varying from what was owned by museums to what was privately owned. 
collectors were threatened with extremely high taxations of their possessions that left them no choice but to trade away their collection against cancellation of the extremely high taxation. Summarized over the period from 1973 till 1989, a total of 300 million DMARC has been generated. Besides that, there are some other cocoa activities worth mentioning. Cocoa company Beak traded, amongst other things, with blood products. In the 80s, blood and blood plasma were sold to West Germany. Although blood plasma was scarce in East Germany, the government decided to sell the blood donated by the population. Later, also East German prisoners were forced to donate blood. Cocoa company Kamet provided the Ministry of State Security with spying technique from the West, thereby circumventing embargo regulations. Last but not least, Coco also provided Wandlitz, that's the compound where the East German politicians lived with all its needs. Food, clothing and also consumer electronics, etc. Let me add some more things that were also strange. There was a narrow cooperation between Coco and the Ministry of State Security, the Stasi. In 1967, Alexander Shal Golodkovsky had been appointed as a so-called Secret Officer in Special Deployment, Offizier in Besonderen Einsatz, working for the Ministry of State Security. Next to him, some more members of the Commercial Coordination Leadership Team got this second secret position, including his wife, by the way. Supervision over Commercial Coordination was very limited. Because of its special role and position, COCO was not audited like any other state company. Operations charged with regular planned trade, on the other hand, were subject to intensive controls, like the Ministry of Trade, the banks, etc. The companies under COCO lacked this control. An audit at the beginning of 1990, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, concluded that in accounting, the greatest disorder prevailed. No responsibilities had been defined, the books were not accurate, Documents were missing or lacked a sufficient level of proper formality. The way that was dealt with money was negligent and careless. Therefore, manipulations and personal enrichment could not be excluded. The cocoa firms paid their profit not directly to the state but to cocoa headquarters. Cocoa headquarters paid one amount to the state that had been agreed at the beginning of each year. The rest of the money remained in the possession of Coco, resulting in a situation where Coco was in the possession of billions that could have been very well spent by the state. And as if that were not enough, when you look a little bit closer, it turns out that commercial coordination also earned a lot of its income from the East German state itself. First of all, Coco had functioned as a loan provider to the state. As of the mid-80s, several loans of hundreds of millions took place with very high interest rates. Second, also Coco had the state companies pay sales provisions for the imports. And third, another topic where a lot of money went down the drain was the sales of goods at dumping prices on the Western markets. Selling products produced in East Germany on the Western markets was done in order to collect the foreign currency to be able to pay the interest of the country's loans. It was deemed necessary to sell below cost price in order to get a competitive position. The Commercial Coordination Division possessed billions that most of the highest East German politicians were not even aware of. At the end of 1989, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, in the basement of its headquarters more than 21,000 kilos of gold bars were found, at that time worth about half a billion DMARC. Today's value around 1.2 billion euros or US dollar. Next to that, bank accounts containing billions converted value more than 7 billion DMARC in different currencies were confiscated. At the same time, East German state treasury was struggling to stay out of bankruptcy. Commercial coordination was founded in 1966 with the objective to generate hard currency in a market where the GDR was largely isolated. During its existence of almost 24 years, it had generated about 27 billion Deutsche Mark. In the time it existed, it was able to operate in an unsupervised way. As long as hard currency was delivered at the end of each year, Alexander Schal Golotkowski's bosses did not complain or ask any questions. The earnings were not used properly. The cocoa profits could, amongst others, have been used to invest in the aged technical equipment of the GDR's industry. 
but instead billions remained secretly on bank accounts and in basements. Coco therefore contributed, be it unintended, to the downfall of the German Democratic Republic. That's it for today. I've done some research and it seems that East Germany Investigated currently is the only YouTube channel on East German history in English. So if you like my videos, please help me to grow this channel. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.